Hello everyone. At the end of the previous lecture, I had mentioned that we would be going from this version of the equation that we had derived, uh, uh, which was uh, written in terms of the xy coordinate system or refer to the xy coordinate system to a coordinate system which was along the periphery. Uh, so we had this s n coordinate system. In this lecture, we are actually going to uh, derive uh, an important relation which is going to enable us to go from uh, to make that transformation. Now specifically uh, our first objective here is to uh, convert this uh, derivatives terms this del del x del del y present here as well as present here uh, into derivatives with respect to s and n. So we want to convert del del x and del del y to, uh, to terms involving del del s and del del n. That's our first objective. Uh, please note that uh, at the end of such a step, we would still be left with terms involving this nx, ny, as well as this mx, my. So at the very first shot, we are not going to make the entire transformation. We are going to do it step by step. So the first objective we'll try to realize. So uh, in this lecture, what we are going to do is try to obtain this relationship between the derivative terms. So uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll just I'll just copy this diagram to the next stage uh, to the next page. And consider uh, our uh, I considered a a unit outward normal which would be like this. Okay, maybe I can just bring it down a little bit. Okay, so uh, this uh, I had I believe referred to as n hat. Uh, now just to keep things. Uh, a little bit more systematic what I will do is I will refer to this as E n hat okay so that uh, it is absolutely clear that this is indeed the unit outward normal okay uh, now uh, what we are going to do here is to uh, so there, there can be uh, different ways of of obtaining this relationship between the derivatives but uh, we'll try to do it in uh, as easy a way as possible and for that what we'll note first of all is that this n hat uh, this is uh, this is uh, let me see uh, this is referred to the or this is inclined to the x-axis at an angle theta okay now please note that uh, I have taken it like this, I might as well have uh, taken it here or here or here, it would make no difference. Okay, for example, if I just go back to the previous slide, uh, you see that it was it was present here. Okay, so, uh, so the, I mean, uh, it's absolutely the same thing. So, so let me let me just get back to this thing. Okay, so instead of doing it here, I can take it very much here. Okay, and uh, we just convert that into green. My x axis is like this, and my y axis is like this. So as I was saying, this E n hat, this is inclined to my x axis by this angle theta. And that will be the starting point of our derivations. So what I'll say is that E n hat, that is basically cos theta i hat plus sine theta j hat and this you note is perfectly equivalent 
to n x i hat plus n y j hat. Okay. Next, I will consider another unit vector, which is the E s vector. So this E s vector, please note, uh, uh, it will have to be oriented in this fashion. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Uh, let me get back to the appropriate page. All right. So, uh, so as I was mentioning, my E S vector has to be oriented in this fashion. Now you will notice that there is a little bit of a discrepancy in the way that I have denoted my ES vector and the orientation of the S that I have drawn here. In fact, this particular orientation of the S, that's, that's a little bit problematic. Uh, I should have done it this fashion. So let me correct that. The reason is, uh, you see, our x, y coordinate system that is oriented uh, in a slightly different fashion uh, compared to uh, what is our uh, usual practice. So usually what we do is to orient our x, y axis in this fashion. So that if you have a contour, which is perhaps like this, somewhat like this, and you consider, uh, you consider a little element over here, you would, uh, so that's the, uh, that's the convention that we follow, that we, uh, that we track this contour in the uh, anti-clockwise sense. So we would write this as S here and this as N here, okay. So uh, you please note that whatever the sense of this tracking is present for this contour with respect to this setup of the coordinate system x, y, uh, which is our usual practice, uh, it is the same kind of uh, system that we are following here. Okay. So for example, if you flip this entire diagram uh, vertically, then our x would still be oriented like this or y would go up. And then the orientation of E and N and E S that would be matching with what we have present here. Okay, so this is uh, a little something uh, which is rather important and we should, which we should keep in mind. Now, uh, given the fact that we have uh, we have uh, set up our our vectors uh, in this fashion as well as our coordinate axis, uh, what would be the representation of E S hat? this unit vector along the contour as we track it in this kind of a fashion. Okay, so, uh, so let us uh, just zoom into this uh, diagram a little bit and note that if uh, our ES is like this and our EN is like this, where this is the angle of inclination theta, then this is 90 degree minus theta, this is theta. And this, this orientation would be 90 degree minus theta. So let me represent that by this double arch or double arc uh, so that this E as vector, that would be written as minus sine theta I hat plus cos theta j hat. Please note that this minus here is extremely, extremely important. Okay, because this cos theta, this sine theta, they are uh, 
by themselves. So if you're considering, uh, so this theta is an acute angle here. So these are all positive uh, quantities. But in order to have the correct representation of E as vector, we really do not need to write this uh, with a minus sign. And that is that is really really important. Uh, that actually makes the difference. Uh, uh, so if you, if you consider here, I mean if you if you consider the minus here and the positive things here. Uh, whether you take the positive things here or the negative things here, that actually makes a difference between whether you are taking this as a unit outward normal or the unit inward normal. Okay, so for example, if you took that uh, as minus cos theta and minus sine theta, that would represent the unit inward normal. Okay, and correspondingly for the ES, it would uh, represent the opposite orientation. So it really does make a difference. Now, because uh, we have this correspondence between the cos theta and the NX, the sine theta and the ny, what we can write here is that this is equal to minus, so sine theta corresponds to ny, so this is minus ny i hat plus nx j hat. This is very important. Okay, now uh, remember that our objective here is to obtain a relationship between the del del x del del y with the del del s del del n. How can we do that? So uh, we will follow a simple strategy of considering a general gradient. Okay, we will consider a general gradient uh, and we will write it in two different fashions. Uh, so first of all, you consider the gradient of some generic entity phi, that is a scalar entity and in the xy coordinate system that would be written as del del x i hat sorry about that del phi del x i hat plus del phi del y j hat again this grad phi that can be written with respect to the Sn coordinate system as del phi del S i hat plus, sorry, uh, this should be E S hat now because we are referring to the Sn coordinate system plus del phi del N E N hat. Now, because our objective is to make some connection between these two, and please note that these two things, they are exactly the same physical entity as far as the physical meaning of this grad of the phi scalar quantities entities involved. They represent the same thing. So this grad phi here is absolutely the same thing as this grad phi. So these are just the different components uh, written with respect to the different coordinate systems of choice. Okay, but physically they mean the same thing, which is why we can draw the connection between them. Now, because we have already obtained this E S uh, hat in terms of the I and J, let us write that down and also write the E N hat in terms of the I and J. And uh, let's compare these two things. So this is del phi del S. E S is minus N Y I hat plus N X J hat. And this will be del phi del N or E n hat is simply n x i hat plus n y j hat. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just club these two things together. So this is del phi del s uh, with a minus n y plus del phi del n nx that's the coefficient of i hat and uh, then i have del phi del s nx plus uh, from here i have this del phi del n ny del phi del n and y. So uh, let me just adjust this entire thing so I'll have a little more space. Uh, okay.
So this is the coefficient of j hat. So all that I have to do is compare this del phi del x, which is the coefficient of i hat here, with the coefficient of i hat here, and this del phi del y, which is the coefficient of j hat here, with the coefficient of j hat, which is this. So um, if I so let me not go to the next page. Let me just complete it here. So if I compare this here with this entire thing. What I will obtain is del del x that is equivalent to minus n y del del s plus n x del del n. Similarly, del del y that is equivalent to n x del del s plus n y del del n. So these are the two relations uh, which was our objective, uh, which we wanted to find out. Okay, so we can go back to our uh, to these relations and replace this del del x del del y with the with the relations that we have just obtained and uh, and proceed uh, a step closer towards the conversion of that entire equation uh, with respect uh, to this S N coordinate system, and that we'll do in the next lecture. Thank you very much.